Hey, sweet girl. She's not going to do it again. Minnie's asking for something. She is. She already asked for it. You guys missed it, but she's being really sweet to make me do it. It's going to be warm under this blanket. Okay. She literally requests this. You weren't even using the blanket. No, I was all folded up. Show her little face. Is that what you wanted? A dad's <laughs> trying to lick her. <laughs> She's like, no, don't lick me. Little pieces of your new hedgehog dead on the floor. Yeah. Mmm, we just vacuumed yesterday. Thank you. So a few days ago on Instagram, I asked you guys for questions about our farmhouse build. So we're gonna do a quick farmhouse q and I've got the questions right here. We've got our tea right here in my Ravenclaw mug because it's not obvious what Harry Potter house I'd be in. Which one would I be in? Oh, you're a Slytherin for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably. Okay, so let me pull up the questions. Here's a good one. And this is kind of a combo question. How do you prepare financially to build a house slash how much does it cost? It costs a lot. It does cost quite a bit, particularly now. So instead of telling you how much our house costs, because that's not going to be helpful information, what I would say to do is look up the current cost per square foot for new construction in your area, because that is the number that's going to give you the best estimate of how much it's going to cost to build your home. Now, that's just an average. That's kind of like the average new build. If you want a lot of upgrades, which we did a lot of upgrades in our home because this is a dream home of ours and we've, you know, we're going to live here forever. Um, that could go up. We didn't exceed it by very much. The average. Um, yeah. I would say the biggest thing is, um, is the long, long, super long-term planning. Right. You can't, this isn't something you can just decide to do and then you're going to do it in six months or one year or two years. I mean, unless your income years. is yeah. sweet, <laughs> this is it's, something you have to plan for for quite a while. The um, longer you, the longer your plan and the better you stick to it. The easier it is on you financially, I think. Yeah. Um, I would also say get your credit score up so you can get the best rate possible on your construction loan slash mortgage. That's the other thing. I don't think very many people know how a construction loan works. And that was not asked because I don't think many people know about it. So maybe we should start there by saying a construction loan works differently from a mortgage. You, how ours worked was that we bought the farm in cash. So we owned the land outright with no payment other than the property tax. Because the land was totally ours, we did not have to put a separate down payment on a construction loan. So this is a different kind of loan. It converts to a mortgage once you move in, but you don't need to put like 10 or 20% down to get a construction loan. You, I think you usually have to own the property, correct? That was my impression. Yeah, it definitely makes things easier because that was one of the questions I remember they asked us. Yeah, you have to liens on the property. Right, you have to own to make it as easy as possible, you have to own the property and the property is used to secure the loan. So construction loans are a little bit more of a risk for the lender because there's no house. <laughs> so they like to see that you own the land outright and then throughout the construction period, you pay a little bit of a higher interest rate, but you don't make principal payments. So you only make interest payments until you move in. At that point, it converts to a mortgage. Whether you have a one-time close or a two-time close is up to your lender. And then you can request a rate reduction to a regular mortgage rate. It's a different type of loan that you do not have to use a down payment for. However, there is a big chunk of cash before that because you have to buy the land. Yeah, you have to buy the land in cash. And this is just for a custom home as well. This is not for one of those neighborhoods where there's a developer because they have different financing options that will allow you to buy the land and the construction at the same time. This is not that. <laughs> That's not what we do. The other part too is when you make those interest only payments, you're only making, the interest is only on the amount that the builder has taken out at that right. time. So they haven't taken the full amount of our loan out yet because the house is still being constructed. So we're only making payments on what they've used. So that was really helpful as well. Yeah. So the payments are a little bit less now, they'll go up later, and then once it converts to a mortgage, that will be our full payment that includes paying down the loan instead of just the interest. 
Anyway, that is a way in-depth answer to the question, which is how much does it cost? Look up the price per, per square foot in your area for new construction, not for already built houses, and make sure you are saving, saving, saving for your land, and prepare yourself financially by making sure your credit score is as good as possible so you get a really good rate on whatever loans you're taking out. You're looking a little tired. Oh, yeah, Jeff just got back from a really long day at work and I'm really happy that he decided to do this video with me. How long does the process take? Oh, wow. Well, In 2020 actually, or normally? Yeah, tough question because <laughs> we've only got the 2020. We got the 2020 experience, which is <laughs> a long ass time. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of things are only supposed to take, you know, a month here and a couple months here, but they ended up taking months and everything months. and took, yeah, much, Just, much longer than To normal. put it in perspective, we applied, we reapplied because we had pre-qualified. That had expired. We reapplied for our construction loan in March and we did not start building until October. And it's eight months from then until the house is done. So it will take over a year for us, but our loan took forever because of COVID. Well, they were they just weren't doing any loans yeah, at the they, time. They were frozen out. They were frozen. The program wasn't even open. So it was months until we got our application approved, which is normally not the case. And then our permits took three months, which our county is kind of notorious for long permit processes, but even then this was actually Yeah, this was long. long for them too. Um, a lot so, of the people weren't at, a lot of government workers weren't at work. They weren't at work to approve so the permits and look at the paperwork. Yeah. So yours will probably take a year, I would say, is a good amount from start to finish, but ours is going to take longer than that because our permit and loan closing process was so long because of, it was happening right when everybody was in lockdown. So. <laughs> we had the worst, longest experience possible. Um, I would say the if you are building a non-custom home in one of the developer neighborhoods, those houses go up way faster. Ours is going to take a little bit longer. How do you choose a contractor? Well, in our case, Donato went to high school. I went to middle school with our contractor. Middle school with so, the contractor's son, yeah. I have known them since we were literal children. The grandfather is like very well known in the area for building really great, very well built custom homes. And now Jay, the dad, is doing a great job. And Jordan, the guy that I know, is working with him and is gonna start his own company eventually. So we really lucked out in that we knew kind of the one of the best contractors in our area, just personally. But what I would say is if there is new construction in your area that you like, go and see who the contractor is. They usually have a sign out front. So the contractor, one of the things that sold us was they were known for building the type of home that we wanted to build. Right. And I guess what really sold me on them was he said, you know, there's ways to do all this stuff cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, there's ways to cut corners and cut down, which cuts costs, but that's not what they do. So if you hire, you know, if that's what you want, then you don't, don't hire, hire them. them. <laughs> and, and that's not what we want because we plan on you know, living the rest of our lives in this house, not moving in moving five, in five years six or years, yeah, ten, even ten years. You know, we plan on staying there for the rest of our lives. So, so we needed it as well built as humanly possible. Yeah, cutting corners today. is just not an option. <laughs> right, you know, I, I can't have an issue thirty years from now when I'm even less capable. <laughs> right, I'm so, trying to handle it. <laughs> this is the house, so your situation may be different. You may be building something because you want immediate equity in a property. And a lot of people do that because if you build, generally the completed version of your house is worth more than what you paid to build it. Generally, ask your contractor, ask your loan agent, whoever you're working with. But generally, once you complete a build, you will have immediate equity in the property. So a lot of people do build, live in it for a few years and then sell and repeat. We're not doing that. <laughs> we are living in this house for as long as we can, physically. And even then the master bedroom is downstairs. Yeah, so you're gonna have to zone. drag me out. <laughs> what has been the most annoying thing so far? Timing. For me, timing yeah, has been the most annoying. Definitely, uh, we, we certainly, when we first started this project, the estimate was that we would probably be in the house by the end of this year. <laughs> obviously. Obviously we're we are not. <laughs> gonna be in the house. Mid next year. Yeah, mid in the middle summer. Of next year. So 
Yeah, unfortunately, the whole 2020, would you say? Yeah, the delays, the delays, the timing has been... Yeah, rain. Rain. A delay, so it's been really rainy lately. What in the design of the house makes it a farmhouse, or is it just a house on a farm? Do you know the answer to this? No. <laughs> so obviously any house on a farm is technically a farmhouse. That's not up for debate. I think farmhouse style to me, and I'm no expert, but there's a few features on the house that make it a farmhouse to me. One is the wraparound porch, obviously. That's something that you see in a lot of farm homes. The other is the symmetry and the gables on the house. So I've posted a few photos of our exterior or the current exterior on Instagram. I'll insert one right here as well. But you'll see that there are two gables on the front of the house. The house is very symmetrical apart from the garage. And then there's the wraparound porch. And that style is pretty indicative to me of a farmhouse. If you were to change that a little bit, make the house a little bit taller, make it asymmetrical, put a gable on one side or make a slanted roof from one side to the other, it, even if the interior layout was the same, it wouldn't look like a farmhouse anymore. So those are there's a few features. I think big windows is another one for us, for the modern farmhouse for sure. And other than that, I think if you've got a house on a farm, you're allowed to call it a farmhouse. <laughs> Anything to add? Nope. What makes it a farmhouse to you, Jeff? I literally have no clue. <laughs> I think a I'm lot of the design person. I think a lot of gathering space and a lot of indoor outdoor living as well. <laughs> I've got my friends in, in these questions, like asking the silly questions. Kalei says, what color is the outside going to be? You're going to have to see later. We're not revealing that <laughs> just <color>. yet. <laughs> Tracy Timberlake says, what color will my curtains be? Tracy has her own room at the house. She's already claimed it. I don't know what color your curtains are going to be, girl. How do you pick all the little details and ensure everything is a cohesive look? <laughs> Get a designer. Get a designer. If you're really struggling, definitely get a designer. That was not in the budget for us. I did a lot of Pinterest. I also looked through a lot of interior design books to see what about the finishes of the space I liked. You've kind of got to ignore the furniture, the curtains, the wall art, the paint color, all of that, because you could change all of that later. What I was looking for was countertops, cabinets, windows, light fixtures, hardwood color, things that are kind of more permanently attached to the house. Those were the things I was looking at to see if I liked and to see if I could find any trends between things. The other thing we did was we stuck with a very, very minimalist color scheme. Jeff was actually a little bit nervous about it because it's so plain and he was worried there would be no color in the house. And I reassured him that we would have curtains and furniture and carpets and wall art and all kinds of things to make it feel warm and somewhat colorful in there. I don't have a super colorful look, but there will be color. Um, but I think- Just like this one pillow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there will be color in the house. I just picked all this furniture for apartments. When you move, you gotta have like, all your big, big furniture pieces need to be neutral so that you can change it up. So for things like the cabinets, the countertops, what I, I know I like for the paint color, for the windows, it's kind of a black, white, and gray situation. The floors are not going to be gray. They're going to be a regular, you know, wood tone. We haven't picked the exact one yet, and I don't want to tell you about it because I don't want to reveal all the secrets, but we chose a very sort of light neutral palette for everything, and then very, very simple, I think. Well, Jeff did pick out a pretty sweet light fixture for the living room. The light fixtures and the tile, I think, are where we had the most fun with some stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the yeah, colors are still very neutral, but the things we picked are very fun. The other thing is just when in doubt, choose the more simple thing and it'll go with everything. <laughs> that's my philosophy anyway. I don't have a very eclectic style, so I think if I had more of a flashy or colorful style, it would be harder to do. But my style is very clean and simple anyway. So find designers you like on Instagram, find interior design books that you like, go on Pinterest, see what you like, what you continue picking out photos of over and over, and just pick that stuff. Okay, this is the last question anyway. What advice would you give someone who is about to build a home? Uh, definitely gotta be patient. Yes. Um, 
you know, don't think the money you put in at the beginning is all the money that you're going to put in. So you need to be saving even after. Yes. For sure. It's going to cost more than they tell you. And during. And during. And there's going to be things that you didn't get asked about that you realize you want later. Or things that come up that they get in the house and you're like, no, that needs to be changed. And the more of that stuff you do, obviously, the more the cost racks up. But if you keep that to a minimum and keep it to the things you really want, you will probably spend more than you initially think, but it won't be crazy and you'll end up with the house that you really like. And also don't try to cheap out now on things that you know you're going to need to replace in like five years because you bought the cheap version that you didn't really like. I would say save for a little bit longer and get what you really want. Although that's coming from a couple that saved for three years. So maybe we well, waited a little bit. Than that, really. <laughs> well, three years specifically three, for this, but right. we're, we're just savers in general. I know we see, we've been <laughs> working toward this project for our entire marriage and probably before that, and we've been married for almost seven years. So we knew that this was kind of like the next big goal. Yeah, we knew this was like I was saying earlier. We knew we both knew that this was the long term goal. So we saved so. and saved and saved. We didn't go on vacations. We didn't buy a new car. We like. This was the priority always, and so we were in a position to say, no, this is what we really want, we'll get that. If you have to make some compromises, prioritize where you're going to make them. So things that can be easily replaced later, like light fixtures, it's okay to save money in those areas. Things that cannot be replaced easily, like the exterior finishes of your home, like the brick. Like, maybe spend your money on that <laughs> because you can't chip that off later and put a new one on. <laughs> you know, you can, you can stain a floor. You can change hardware on cabinets. Kind of hard to change tile once it's up and in. Yeah, kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. can be done, but I don't know. Might not be as cost effective. It's not a five years from now project. It's a 10, 20 years from now project. So things that are important for you to, to like because they're going to be more permanent parts of the home splurge on those things to get what you really want and then save money elsewhere. She was kicking me for not touching her. Daisy <laughs> says to get a house with a yard. Oh, That's her yeah. advice. <laughs> yeah, really, we just uh, saved up and, and built the house so our dogs would have a yard. Yeah, it's also <laughs> our dogs can have a better life, really. <laughs> That's it for this one. I'm sure there'll be another Q&A, a lot more farmhouse videos coming. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we will see you tomorrow in another one. Bye.